Hey everyone, welcome to Yoga with Maria. I'm Maria and today we're practicing cat pose. This is a posture that's found in many yoga warm-ups, so we're gonna break it down, take it with some dynamic movement, and also discover where else we find cat spine and how that can help us. You don't need much for this practice, just a space on the floor or your mat. Make sure you're subscribed to this channel so you don't miss any new videos, and let's get started. All right, yogis, come to your mat and just take a seat with the knees together. Come to sit on the heels. And I'm going to turn to the side so that you can see this. But first, just take the hands to the lap, the eyes close, and just take a moment or two to notice the breath. Right? It wouldn't be yoga if we didn't take a few moments to tune in, if we didn't. Pay close attention to the breath while we take these movements. So just take a moment here to do that. So nice. And then you'll leave the hands on the top of the lap. And we're just going to warm up the spine a little bit here. So on your breath in, you'll lift the chest a little. The hands will slide up your legs. Maybe the chin will lift with your sternum. And on the exhale, slide the hands back towards the knees, find a little round into the spine. You can take the chin towards the chest. And then again, breathe in, pull the hands towards yourself, sternum and chin lift. Think about broadening across the um, collarbones and then round the spine, slide the hands towards the knees. One more time with the breath in and out. So nice. So we'll come to our hands and knees. We're practicing cat pose today. So this is found in many warm-ups and it's a nice way to warm up the spine. So set up the shoulders over the wrist, set up the hips over the knees, and we're really just looking for 90 degree angles in the body. So there's a 90 degree angle here between the arm and the torso and then we've got one another 90 degree angle in the hip which will then automatically create a 90 degree angle between the back of your leg and your calf muscle. So that's one of the main things to make sure that you have set up when you're practicing cat pose. So just find a nice neutral spine here. Take the gaze a little bit forward maybe 12 to 18 inches in front of the fingertips. And you'll just, on your next breath in, you'll do nothing, just stay here. On the exhale, you'll press down into the hands and begin to round the spine. So think about the belly button coming towards the spine. And this action will naturally allow the head to fall heavy. The action in the lower spine will want to translate to the cervical spine or your neck so just let the head fall heavy and you'll feel a little puffing up of your upper back make sure that you're pressing the tops of the feet down as well and the shins good and then come back to neutral on your next inhale that was cat pose let's try that again so just breathe normally here and then notice your inhale and you'll just stay here in this neutral position. And then on your exhale, once again, you'll press down into the hands and the tops of the feet and begin to round the spine. Feel the upper back puff up, let the head fall heavy. See if you can find a little bit more length in the back of your neck. Really just an action of kind of releasing the neck here. Good, and then again, that belly button pulls in towards the spine. And then on your next inhale, you'll just come back to your neutral spine once again. Very nice. We'll take one more like this. So again, just notice your inhale. And then the exhale, press into the hands and the feet, round the spine. This time, so in this, it's much easier for the upper back to round. So take one hand to your low back. And as you're in this cat pose, see if you can puff up the, up the lower back a little bit more. So the non-intuitive part of the back. The upper back's going to naturally puff up and round because of the natural curve of the spine. But see if you can puff up this lower back area as well. 
Just taking a little bit more energy and breath there. And then we'll release this, come back to neutral. Come to sit on the heels. Take a moment to roll the wrist. We spend a good amount of time on the hands. And then the next thing we'll do is do some cat cows. So we'll include the, um, the back bend with the bit of the fore bend of the cat. Um, just to show you what that feels like. Again, it's included in a lot of my videos and you'll find it often in maybe a public class if you try that out ever. So take the hands back to the mat. And then on your breath in, you'll let the belly drop down, the tail lifts, the head lifts, the collarbones spread, and the chest reaches forward. And then the, on the exhale, press into the hands, the tops of the feet, round the spine, take the belly button to the back, let the head fall heavy. Again, breathe in, let the belly drop, chest reaches forward, gaze goes up. On the exhale, take your cat pose, see if you can Take your attention and your breath to the lower part of the back. One more time, breathe in, make it fluid. Use the whole movement for the whole breath. And then breathe out. On the inhale, come back to neutral. On your exhale, take the seat back down to the heels. So that's our cat cow. I wanted to talk about a few other things. So for many of us, that rounding of the spine might feel really nice. You know, nowadays, many of us sit at computers and we look down at our phones. So for a lot of us, the, the back muscles are actually likely overstretched just because of the way that we spend a lot of our time. At the same time, so that, that rounding, a lot of times we need to do more back bending to counteract that and strengthen those muscles. At the same time though, many of us hold tension in the neck and the upper back as well because we, we might be hunching a little bit forward, but we're also like tensing the back. So if this rounded spine feels really nice for you, there's no shame in wanting to like stretch that out and try to release tension in that area. So some other things if you want to open up this upper part of the back is one that I really love, we'll start with. It's called just eagle wrap of the arm. So take your arms out to the side, I'll kind of face the side here and then take the right arm underneath the left and then the backs of the hands can press or if the palms, if you wanna cross at the wrists and press the palms, you can. And right away, you'll probably feel a nice opening in the upper back. You'll feel the shoulder blades kind of spread apart from one another. And then you can kind of lift the elbows up here. And I like to pull them just gently, don't overdo it. There's no need to try to pull anything or do your hardest, most opening stretch here, but you can slightly pull the elbows away and down away from you and you'll feel you can kind of move them side to side just kind of experiment with your body to see where you might have a sticky spot and then you can kind of stay there and scrub on it a little bit good and then we'll unwind just take the arms to the side and we'll take the other side so left arm comes underneath right same thing hand, back of the hands can press if that's accessible or you can press the palms and then same thing lift up and then down and away then you might make little circles one way and then the other way. Another nice thing to do is look side to side. So nice. And then unwind, take the arms to the side. And then we're going to do something from our downward facing dog and explore a little bit of where sometimes we want to find the cat spine and where we should, like where we can find it and where we shouldn't. So come bring your hands back to the mat. Make sure that your wrist creases are parallel with the front of your mat, and then take your hips up and back for downward facing dog. Pedal out the feet a few times here just to open up the backs of the legs. And then from here, find some stillness and breathe in to lift your right leg up and back any amount. On your exhale, bring the knee towards the nose. And you notice here, you can press into the hands here because you're tucking your chin and taking the knee to the nose, so you find that cat spine. And then breathe in, lift the leg up. And we'll just take it one more time so you can get a chance to feel what that feels like. Knee to nose, puff up the upper back, and then breathe in, take the leg up and back, and then just take the foot down. So that's a nice place to find cat, and we'll just do it with the other leg. Left leg lifts, breathe in. Breathe out, take the knee to the nose. On the exhale, again, leg lifts. 
exhale, take the knee to the nose, press into the hands. You can puff up the upper spine for this or the upper back. And then lift the leg one more time for the inhale and take the foot down for the exhale. Now I'm gonna show you sometimes there's, there's a, a few things here that we can work on in plank. So if you come to plank pose, if you're sinking way down into your plank, I'm over exaggerating here. I'm gonna put my knees down so I don't hurt myself. If you're like sinking down into the shoulders, it can be valuable to use the actions in cat pose to press down into the hands to lift yourself out of it. However, we don't wanna to get to the point when we're puffing up the back so much that we have that super rounded cat spine in the back. So a nice way to find a happy medium is make sure that the toes are tucked back behind you a little bit so that the sole of the feet are almost like parallel with the wall behind you. And in our plank pose, we want the chest to be reaching forward and the gaze to be reaching forward. We want the shoulder blades on the back. So it's a little bit different. Yeah, the low belly pulls in. It's a little bit different than pressing down into the hands completely and finding this like uh, round in the upper back. We want the spine in a neutral setting. Okay, knees are coming down. I hope that you can see that and kind of see the difference. And then I'll show you one more pose that I like for up, opening up the upper part of the back. It's called rabbit pose. So you can practice this in tandem as you're practicing cat. So you'll fold the belly onto the thighs. You're just sitting on the heels here and the hands come back behind you and catch the outer edges of the uh, feet. And then bring the crown of the head to the mat and then you'll just kind of roll onto the top of the head or the crown of the head. Keep a hold of the heels here and you'll begin to feel a nice opening in the upper part of the back. It should feel a little similar to what we did in Eagle Pose. Notice another cycle of breath here and then slowly roll yourself down. Take the hands underneath the shoulders and just press yourself up to a seat here. Take the hands to the lap. Let the eyes close one more time. Notice your breath again. Notice how the body feels. And then take the hands to touch in front of the sternum or at your heart center. Put a little tuck in the chin. Namaste, yogis. Cat pose is a great way to begin to warm up the body. If you'd like to continue on with your practice today, check out my quick 18 minute whole body flow where we strengthen and open all parts of the body. Try it out, let me know how it goes.